by NFL standards, they should be the fiercest of enemies. One, an Atlanta Falcon, the other, a New Orleans Saint. But there is far more at play in this relationship than just rivalry. Tim Green and Steve Gleason, warriors on the gridiron, now both facing the fight of their lives off of it. Syracuse defensive end Tim Green was the Falcons' first round draft pick in 1986. He played eight seasons in Atlanta, retiring after the 1993 season. That, though, was just the first chapter of his professional career. The two-time All-American spent the last three decades as a modern renaissance man of sorts. He's balanced a career as a lawyer, a television personality, and most notably, the author of multiple New York Times best-selling novels for youth. But his wife and their five children? Well, they describe him a little differently. Amazing, great, kind, loving. You can't describe him. How would you describe him? Superman. It's like being raised by like Prince Charming or Superman, right? Like I got to watch him woo my mom, you know, with flowers just because it's Tuesday. He raised me to like expect nothing less from a husband. That positivity shows up. Um, just that's, he's just a positive, upbeat, awesome person. And yeah, I think also too, like that's who I strive to be as a dad, is just like him. In 2016, the Green family's world was turned upside down. Tim began having struggles steadying his hands. After multiple procedures to address the symptoms, the cause came to the forefront. Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, ALS, was the diagnosis. The disease is defined as a progressive neurodegenerative disease. It affects the nerve cells in the brain and the spinal cord and it stopped the Greens in their tracks. We couldn't believe it. We could hardly even talk about it. It was in New York City and we drove back here and we hardly could even talk about it. it was, but we knew we were gonna fight it together. It was hard, but at the same time, it's like, okay, but if anyone can beat it, it's dad. I mean, if anyone's gonna win against anything, it's my dad. I mean, who, who better than to fight a disease that no one has a cure to. Tim Green, you know, tackle ALS. That's, he's gonna tackle ALS. I mean, who else can tackle ALS? If, if not for Superman. The mean life expectancy for a patient with ALS is two to five years. Tim is now in year seven. The disease may have taken his ability to speak verbally and stripped him of his mobility. It has not, however, taken his spirit or his will. But to tackle ALS effectively, Tim Green would need a teammate. One man who had the experience and know-how to guide him through some of the darkest days of his life. I actually first heard about ALS watching a Falcon Saints game and they showed Steve Gleason, who's obviously a really powerful voice in the ALS community and has done a tremendous amount for it. After I was diagnosed, it was critical for me to see someone who was living with ALS and thriving despite the disease. For me, that person was Steve Gleason. He's been an inspiration to me. He is a remarkable person, and he helped me through some rough times. If we recall, there was a play between the Saints and the Falcons, I think. I this little tiny one, yeah. I think it was something happened with the... A pun? A maybe? pun, I think, right? A block, maybe? <laughs> Look out! Right through! A kick block by Steve Gleason! It is scooped and scored by Curtis DeLoach! Touchdown, New Orleans! In the Saints' first game back in New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina, Steve was the centerpiece of one of the NFL's most iconic moments. For me, the punt is a symbol of the commitment of the people in the region who chose to return and rebuild. Their commitment and strength was far greater than any of the players on the field. We were a representation of them, the significance of the block, 
even in the moment immediately after the play, was not lost on me. I just knew at that moment it was, it was the most exciting thing we could possibly experience. It just brought the city back from a place where it didn't believe in itself and, you know, gave them belief that we can, yeah, be reborn. We were struggling and didn't know if we could do it and this said that we can. In 2011, just five years after that block heard round the world, Steve received an ALS diagnosis of his own. Just 34 years old at the time, he resolved to fight the disease and to help others do the same. When Steve was diagnosed, he noticed that there was a lot of org ALS organizations doing, they had their hands in a lot, right? They had their eggs in a lot of different baskets. He didn't see any ALS organization focusing on the now needs. And he found others that were actually thriving by leveraging technology to be independent, right? For communication, mobility. And for that reason, he started Team Gleason with a mission to provide an advanced leading edge technology and equipment to give people the tools to do what they love to do. 12 years later, Team Gleason has done exactly that. The organization has leveraged partnerships with technology giants like Google, Apple, Microsoft, and dozens more to lead new advancements for the ALS community. They've curated life-changing adventures for men and women battling ALS all over the globe. And using the rallying cry of no white flags, they've empowered the ALS community to live purposeful lives. Do you remember when you were three? A little. Steve's latest adventure, fatherhood. The former saint now plays the position of dad to his son Rivers and his daughter Gray. Gray, Gray and Pearl, that was so fun to walk through the park with you. It's one of my favorite parts of my day. Steve as a dad is incredible. Um, he is our constant, he is patient, he is loving, he shows up, he is present, he is there for them. Yeah, he's our oak, he's our, he's our guy, and we're so thankful to have him. Rivers, I'm not really interested in your performance. I'm interested in your AFE brother. Invincible attitude, clear focus, and heroic effort. I love you, foe to foe, mofo. Come on, Without the technology and the equipment available today, I would have been forced, like Lou Gehrig and millions of others, to fade away quietly and die. Technology allows me to live purposefully and productively. It allows me to be a father to Rivers and Bray. I'm able to teach and guide them and be their companion on this beautiful journey. So Rivers has read all of Tim's books. How did that come about? He has. We got a collection of signed hardback books from Tim Green. Steve must have introduced it to Rivers. So I guess from that moment, Rivers read it and then continued to like him. 1,300 miles away, the author uses technology championed by Team Gleason to continue writing books and he pushes forward with a life that is different, but still good. What's life like with him now? It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's so fun. I mean, we do almost everything that we did before we can do today. And that's been one of the key things about, um, you know, fighting against ALS is not taking no for an answer. Years ago, Tim bought all this property, and we said we wanted the kids all to live close to us. And we all live on the same street. Well, how important is that to you, especially having to go through this? Very. We're together all the time. Whatever he needs, all of us are there. No matter what we're doing, anything happens, we're ready to drop everything and help any way we can. What I said to him is, physically, none of us need you. What we need is your mind, and your soul, and your heart. One of the reasons I, 
I wanted to have uh, kids younger was so that my kids could have a relationship with my dad. And it's uh, been such a good, such a good experience and so worth it. And uh, they're able to, to do things like they play and Thea is such a, uh, such a ham and he's such a sucker for her that like, you know, she's, she's uh, knows he writes books now. So she's got him writing her book. So she'll narrate and he'll type the words to, you know, they're working on a book together. And I think they're three pages in. She works, she gets a sentence in and says, all right, Pop, that'll be it. Now let's watch uh, Beauty and the Beast. There is nothing I enjoy more than spending time with my family, watching them live and grow, especially my eight grandkids who I see almost daily, and watching my kids be parents themselves. Tim Green's Tackle ALS organization focuses on raising money for medical research while Team Gleason continues to address the technology needs of ALS patients. A formidable one-two punch in the battle against this terrible disease. The pair of organizations is now calling on fans on both sides of this storied rivalry to step up and contribute. Games in both Atlanta and New Orleans will feature a 50-50 raffle with all proceeds benefiting both Tackle ALS and Team Gleason. The Falcons and Saints is like cats and dogs, but that's only on the field. One of the most generous, kind, and compassionate people I know is Bobby Hebert, and Steve Gleason might have saved my life, so I expect people on both sides of this friendly rivalry will get it and want to help. We've got to work together to move the needle, to put an end to this disease. And it takes partnerships and great leaders and collaborators to accomplish that. And that's what we have in Steve Gleason and Tim Green. And I think that they're there for each other in a way that you and I will never understand or see. Life is bigger than football, even bigger than Saints and Falcons football. The impact of ALS goes beyond the rivalry. Rivalries are fun, but I think life is about dissolving concepts like rivalries and recognizing that we are all in this together, baby. Both teams continue to prove there is no rivalry between them when it comes to helping people live with ALS.